Now, today's stage in Nice is actually the tour's first since 1981, and it's a bit of a flying visit as time trials go. Just 25 kilometres long, partly to accommodate the relocation from Corsica, but mainly to limit the losses of any big favourites whose teams might let them down. There are plenty of strong squads in this discipline, though, and at that distance, on a flat course, we could well see a record time. Race. Next team is the team from Spain, Team Movistar, the team of Alejandro Valverde. So they are now rolling down the starting ramp and they'll pick themselves up to maximum speed as quickly as possible and they now know the time is still the time of Omega Pharma Quickstep to beat. That's the 14th team to get off the start ramp of the 22 teams, so we're moving into the creme de la creme now. But remember, two good times expected and not far away from the finish now as we pick up the action with number one in our picture. The big favourite for the Tour de France, Chris Froome. He'll demand an awful lot from his team today. I'll tell you one thing, Phil, you can take your hat off to uh, Geraint Thomas. He struggled over the first half of this race. He realised how, how important the second half of the course is going to be. He knows they're a few seconds down on the time of Omega Pharma Quickstep, but there he is, number nine. He's got himself off the back. He's got his painful body warmed up a fraction now, and he's coming to the front to help the team to keep their pace nice and high. He is such a great bike rider with pure, where pure speed is involved. An Olympic gold medalist, the world record holding world champion, Geraint Thomas. There he is now. He's pushed himself through to give every little effort he can give here to try and make up the deficit uh, behind Amiga Farmer Quickstep and behind Garmin Sharp. Now with the Russian team here, Katusha coming through to the only checkpoint out on the course. They're slipping away from the podium places today as they're just uh, about to beat the time of Cannondale, 13.27 for them. But it's not very much, the time gaps are not huge. Here's Garmin Sharp now, Phil, they're into the finishing straight. Now this is the one, they're aiming at Omega Pharma Quickstep, and there's time, it's going to be desperately close as they fan out. Remember the clock will stop on the fifth man at 25.57. Garmin Sharp could have reversed this with a big sprint to the line. It is going to be very, very close, but I think they'll go the wrong way, and they do. Garmin Sharp will not be putting David Miller in the yellow jersey today, but they haven't lost a great deal of time. It's an awful long way up this finishing straight. Are they going to beat the time of Lotto Bellasoli? No, they're not, just a tenth of a second outside. Very, very close indeed. They tried hard over the second half of this race here this afternoon. They wanted to try and put David Miller into the yellow jersey. That's the face of Dan Martin there, who leads them across the line. And I tell you what, this is proving to be a really difficult time to beat for the Belgian squad, Omega Pharma Quickstep. There is Alberto Contador. He is very proud with this team. He ranks the strongest he's ever brought to the Tour de France. So, it will not be Alberto Contador leading the way. He's leaving that honour up to Michael Rogers just there over on the right-hand side. Rogers, a three-time champion of Otano. Rogers is going around there in third place. They're leading their rollout to Matteo Tosato. Now, Contador looking very, very nervous, I thought, on that start line. He knows how important this is. He will also know the time done by Amiga Pharma Quickstep. Uh, because they finished, and also that of Garmin Sharp, so they've got themselves a ballpark target now as they go off. On the promenade is Anglais, not too far from the finish, and still working in a terrific, well-organised line. Number nine, you see Geran Thomas, he had a bit of a ride as a passenger on the way out, but he's certainly working on the way back. Well, his nickname in the team is G. He's, he's given his off, all here this job. afternoon. But you know what, Phil? He gave a good five or six kilometres of turns. He can prove away now because he's only a kilometre away from the finishing line. So one kilometre to go. The time that they will have to beat is the time of Mark Cavendish's Belgian team, Omega Pharma Quickstep. That is 25 minutes and 57 seconds. Now they're going to have to go very, very quickly over this final kilometre. They're travelling at speeds in excess of 60 kilometres an hour. It's going to be very, very quick indeed as Edouard Bosenhagen tries to get himself onto the back of that line. They've shed off Geraint Thomas, but he helped a lot for about five or six kilometres there.
Now they've just dispatched off the back and number nine, uh, Geran Thomas, he did a turn and he's letting them all race for the finish now. As always, the clock stops on the fifth rider. Amiga's time is 57, it could well do this. They are veritably sprinting down the straight. It is going to be desperately close. They were four, five seconds off at the turn of the time of Amiga Farmer Quickstep. Now, have they turned the tables on the way back? they got just four seconds to go to the line. It is going to be very close. They may just go outside of it. They have, but by two seconds only. So the Sky team are in second place. They're not going to worry about two seconds, Paul. If you look at this bike race over three weeks, they may well be quite happy to have Omega Farmer quick step ahead of them, controlling the race with Kwiatkowski over the next. But, you know, there's still a number of teams to come in. Uh, let's not discount Team Saxo Tinkoff. Orica Green Edge are very good at the team time trial. So, too, are Team BMC Racing. But what amazes me, what astounds me, Phil, is how close these teams are together. There are not big time gaps in this team time trial today. Alberto Contador, number 91. Just slipped to the back momentarily here, but this team is absolutely flying at the moment, Paul. It's another team up around 57, 58 kilometers now. I have to say that Nicholas Rocha making the switch during the winter transfer season. Rocha riding in the early, this is Rocha on the front actually, uh, riding the early part of his career, Phil, for uh, French teams, but then all of a sudden deciding he was no longer going to be a, a guy who could win the Tour de France like his father. And actually, I bumped into Stephen Rocha just before the start of this race and asked him how Nicholas was going. He said, Nicholas is prepared to work for Alberto Contador and he's very happy with the change to an international team. And that tie by Saxo Tinkoff, Paul, just one second slower than Amiga Farmer quick step. Gee, what was the tactic today? Was it to give everything at the start and drop off? For me, it was, uh, yeah, I started the back. Uh, the boys do their thing, and it was just up to me to hang in there. And, uh, yeah, for just full gas, just give everything I had to, to stay with them. And fortunately, I did, and then it was just do what I could and uh, managed to give them a few turns. I didn't, you know get carried away at the start and try and do too much or anything or and then just gave us everything I could in the last 2k then and uh, you know I think uh, we wrote that pretty well I think we were communicating really well and I think we can be happy with uh, how we did really and how is the pain uh, to be honest it, it wasn't too bad then it was it was just it's kind of like uh, it's like on the track you know it's just bam and then you're just in it and it hurts but you know it's over so quick um, it's tougher on the road stages when it's just that that constant sort of niggle all the time and uh, yeah so that's no, okay. You were really up for that today for getting through it? Yeah definitely I just wanted to uh, just get it stuck in for the boys and uh, yeah we did. Now Saxo Tinkoff heading on this will be the interesting one Movistar were through in the fifth best time, but they were ahead of Lotto, and Lotto still hold on to third place. Saxo Tinkoff here through in second best time and could have improved their speed and might sneak the best time. That's what they're hoping. Well, this is Alberto Contador. He's been one of the best time trialists in the world, but he is currently the most successful Grand Tour rider on the international circuit, and he realises this time he's got a really strong squad with him. He's a very good individual time to us, have, as we've seen in the Tour de France in the past. Now let's go back to the finish. Movistar is here. Have they improved on their performance? They were fifth best time at the turn, uh, but they were quicker than Lotto, who hold third best finish at the moment. So Movistar coming up, and the challenging Sky time, that's gone. Now they're looking for Lotto. This is a good ride here for Alejandro Valverde's Movitar team. Uh, they are, uh, also have improved over the last couple of seasons, proving that they can compete at the top end of the board in the team time trial. They stop the clock in fifth place, 18 seconds adrift at 57 kilometres an hour. David, uh, not to be obviously huge disappointment, I guess. Did, you, did it go OK? Did the ride go OK? I went fantastic. I mean, I was the one that was probably let the team down a bit. I just wasn't, wasn't on a good day. So, but the team was incredible. Um, but you know, it's, it's disappointing. But we were we didn't make any mistakes, so we got nothing to. We can't beat ourselves up. 
Did you, did you get to the start ramp in, in hope or expectation or a mixture of both? I mean, did you see yourselves as strong favourites for this? Uh, no, we, we, we know we're one of the strongest teams, but, you know, it's a Tour de France. Every team here is incredibly strong, so it's, uh, it's disappointing, but that's racing. And the Tour de France stretches ahead of you. <laughs> Obviously, you've, you've, you've come tantalisingly close. Now you're going to have to, as an individual rider, at least refocus your efforts, aren't you? Uh, yeah, no, not really. We, kind of, we, we came with a lot of different objectives, so this was one of them. We, we haven't got it. We almost got the yellow jersey on Sunday, so you know we're, we're close, but there's still two weeks of racing, two and a half weeks of racing, so there's still loads to go for. And the race really begins now, doesn't it? <sighs> really begun on Saturday now. <laughs> <laughs> As we go back to the penultimate team to climb into the starting gate, the winner of the Tour de France in 2011, the Australian Cadell Evans. His teammates are made up of Brent Bookwalter of the United States, Marcus Burkhart, world champion Philippe Gilbert, Armel Moynard, Manuel Quinziato, and TJ Van Garderen of the United States. This is a solid squad, and the one thing about Cadell Evans in the red helmet in the middle there, a different colour helmet to everybody else, is Cadell is a motivator. He motivates his squad, and I think uh, with having gone through the three days in Corsica without any incident or any problems at all, he will be uh, pushing his teams to a higher high. He realises how important it is. The best placed rider on his uh, squad, if it comes down to the, uh, the, uh, the, the win for them, is Cadell Evans himself, who starts the day in ninth place in the overall standings. That's all on countback and all on time for the moment. So 72 riders within a, a second of the overall lead. We're now back with Saxo Tinkoff. 98, Michael Rogers. 91, Alberto Contador. His team are very well drilled indeed. You can see the Flam Rouge, the red kite. The crowds have turned out in the Côte d'Azur here this afternoon to witness a very interesting but very, very closely contested team time trial. Omega Pharma Quickstep, the first team. Second, Sky Pro Cycling at two seconds. Lotto Belisol, Garmin at 16 seconds. Not huge time gaps at all here this afternoon. And as uh, Jonathan Vaught has himself uh, predicted, the team who will win is the team who makes the least number of mistakes. It's not necessarily a question of pure speed. Look at the urgency now of the pedaling style of Alberto Contador. He really wants to try and grab this one. And uh, if they cross the line with the best team, it will be the Irishman, Nicholas Roach, who will pull on the overall leader's jersey this afternoon. They are stomping up to the line. It's going to be very, very close indeed. But I think we're looking at a brand new time. As they come up to the line now, Saxo Tinkoff, have they reversed that one second deficit at the point out on the course? And will this give Nicholas Roach the Irish when a yellow jersey, just like his dad got in 1987 when he went on it? No, it's not going to happen. They've lost a little bit of ground on the way back and they've gone through the time of Amiga Farmer Quickstep. They hit the line, only third best in the end. 26.05 it just goes to give a little bit of a reference to omega farmer quick step the performance they put in was phenomenal they held it over the uh, first part of the course and they did not falter over the second part of the course but now it's orica green edge who looked to be challenging the time of omega farmer quick step well this is amazing if this is the case with the australians then you can look towards the man who won yesterday pulling yellow on tonight there's the time, Amiga Farm. A little bit further to go on this left hand is where the clock stops. Three seconds they're looking for. 13 19 for the Australian setup. The last team to go because Jon Beckelance in the yellow jersey is the leader of the Tour de France. His first tour, he's won a stage and he's led now for two days. Overnight, this man has become a cult figure in Belgium. Yes, he uh, really pulled a, a very fast one out of the bag when he got into a six-man breakaway on the road down to Ajaxio, and then when he could see they were about to get caught on the run into the finish, he jumped clear, and he's the last man and the last team to start. We look at the team here, this is the arrival of Orica Greenedge, the rider winning 183 in red is Simon Clark because he was in that leading group all day yesterday, in the end he worked out for Simon Gerrand and this could be a good time, 
Not sure it's going to reach Farm on Quick Step. It's going to be very, very close indeed because they are riding about 60 kilometres an hour. It takes 60 seconds to cover the last kilometre, and they went through that kilometre kite there exactly one second, one minute to go to the finish. So it'll be one second for them or one second behind. It's going to well, be so, so close. If they have pulled this one off, this will be a huge coup. I think they can see the clock now as they fight on here. They're coming to the line with six riders. They only need five for the time. And the most important thing is that if they set the best time, that man there, Simon Gerrans, going through, would be the leader of the Tour de France, assuming the riders behind uh, don't beat this time. It is going to be desperately close. They know how close they are. Look at the faces as they drive up towards the line. They've got five, six seconds, five seconds four, three, they're sitting up as they hit the line, they have done it by 0.75 of a second, Paul, that is an outstanding performance well, uh, 0.75 of a second bear in mind, the time will go to the time of the fifth ride, it depends how close he was to the man who stopped the finishing clock but it should theoretically go to Orica Greenheads, that is so very, very close, they were sprinting over the last 500 metres, and you are right, Phil they were looking at the clock over the finishing gantry to see whether or not they they could beat the winning time. What an effort for Orica Green Edge. Uh, BMC are now going round the mid check, but they're off the pace here. They're outside, they've gone through with only the seventh best time of 13 at 24 for BMC. But it's not that important, Phil, because it's only an eight second difference between the fastest yeah. time of Omega Farmer Quick Step. I mean, if you look at the first eight teams at the first checkpoint, they were only separated by eight seconds. These are the leaders of team and individual. And Jan Bekelans is finding the power of wearing a yellow jersey. He's giving it his all. Well, the amazing thing, Phil, is uh, we thought that the team time trial stage today was going to open up the gaps, but it's hardly opened up the gaps at all because at the finish line, the first uh, seven teams are only separated by less than 20 seconds. This is the situation now at the finish. This is Simon Gerrans. Fingers crossed for Simon Gerrans now. Is he going to be the next Australian to wear the maillot jaune? He's got to wait a little while yet. Well, they were uh, pretty excited there with that performance, but you know, this is not a bad ride here by Team Radio Shack either. They're uh, challenging the top five or six positions. They're now uh, just going outside the team, uh, the time of a Movi start. As they come up, they will stop the clock. Again, these gaps are not huge. 11 seconds, their ninth best time at the moment, 58 kilometres an hour, and could all change in the latter half of this race. Fidel, winner of the Tour de France in 2011, seventh in the Tour de France last year, third in the Giro d'Italia this year after a very good start to the season in the Tour of Oman. Oh, a little bit of a little bit of a bad line around that corner there. Uh, nervousness, uh, these guys are realising that as we have a look there, these bikes, as I said, there's not too many corners uh, out on the team time trial here this afternoon. Uh, and as I've said, these bikes are not built for manoeuvrability. They're built for aerodynamics and they're very precarious and dangerous to move uh, around corners sometimes. But once you get into the straight part of this course, that's where you reap the benefit of a good aerodynamic machine. It has been tight and it's not really done a lot to upset the overall classification going forward in the next two weeks. Uh, but it could turn out to be an incredibly uh, celebratory day for Australia. So that could very well be the new uh, overall leader of the Tour de France tonight. The winner of the final stage on the island of Corsica, Simon Gerrans. Looks very calm and collective, doesn't he? Philippe Joubert there is uh, the rider with the bandage on his knee. He uh, went down in one of those silly crashes in the early part of this race, but he's a strong character and he will have given his all in this team time trial today because he realises how important it is, not only for Cadell Evans, but also for the American rider there wearing number 39, TJ Van Garderen. Yes, he's looking very cool, uh, right over the front, but being driven on by the team captain just now, Cadell Evans, he's looking very strong. TJ Van Garderen about to rush through on the other American on the team, Brent Brookwater, number 32. As a team, they're looking very, very good, but it's the time which will realise which way the yellow jersey will go, and it doesn't look as though it's going to be challenged by Team BMC. Is it going to be challenged by the holders of the yellow jersey, Team Radio Shack? 
49, just getting a bit of a push there because uh, his teammate 43 was able to get onto the line. And that, of course, Laurent Didier, the youngster from Luxembourg 49, Heimar Zubeldia. It's the yellow jersey, Jan Bakkeland on the front, giving his all to try and keep the yellow jersey on his shoulders for another day. Time to beat is Orica Green Edge of Australia, 25.56, a second faster than Omega Pharma Quickstep, three seconds faster than Team Sky Pro Cycling. Rolling off the back now, and number 33, they've done his job for the day, Marcus Burkhardt. The time, let's not forget, is taken by the fifth rider who crosses the line. We need five riders to stop the clock here at the Tour de France in the time trial. The time to beat is 25 minutes and 56 seconds. This one, Paul, cannot be beat. At the time of Olica Green Edge, they can't catch it with that now. No, they, need, uh, they, they would have needed uh, around about 60 seconds to cover the last kilometre of this race at 60 kilometres an hour over the final 1,000 metres, and they're not going to do that because they went through, I made it roughly through the kilometre flag at 25.15, so I think their finishing time will be about 26.15. But they're working as a team, and in the long term of this year's Tour de France, they're not conceding very much at all. We're talking seconds, and this Tour de France won't be won with seconds by the time we get to Paris. So they're keeping themselves in amongst the favourites as they race up to the line, but it won't be the best time as it slips slowly away. They're just going behind Saxo Tinkoff as they come up towards the line. Cadell Evans is bringing them home as they race through, but they've got the two important riders here. Evans and TJ Van Gorderen as they're aiming now at the eighth time and they should just about squeeze inside 26-21 or will they just outside 26-22. Loss of 26 seconds for BMC Racing over Orica Green Edge uh, and a loss of, let's not forget for Cadell Evans, of 25 seconds against Christopher Froome and that's what we have to bear in mind. We've had the battle today for the overall lead of the race but the overall battle for the Tour de France after three weeks of racing is still a long way to go. 25 minutes has been hit and the best time is 25.56 and they're short of the kilometre kite which will take another minute once they get there so it looks as though they are actually losing they're probably the most time for Andy Schleck of the teams. Yes, uh, they actually performed pretty well in the first time check. They were just 11 seconds adrift, but I don't think they've managed to uh, pick up the pace over the last part. I think uh, Simon Gerrans now realises it's all over. The celebrations are about to begin. There's Stuart O'Grady. Yes, but down at the finishing line, already Oliver Greenedge are celebrating just uh, to the left of our commentary position, while here on screen we're seeing the arrival of the erstwhile team leaders of the Tour de France and the individual leader who is bringing them home here in the yellow jersey. It's been a marvellous two days, a dream lived through for Jan Beckerlands, but now it is over and the next Maillot Jaune of the Tour de France will be an Australian and that will be Simon Gerrans as he now gets ready for the yellow jersey. It's, uh, it's not a great time, one has to say, by Radio Shack either as they come up to the line because for Andy Schleck he is losing more than a minute uh, to men who will seriously attack him in the mountains. The final time, 26 to 25 and only 11 of the 22 squads. And that was the cue for a full-on team celebration which was still going by the time Orica Green Edge made it onto the podium. The official result looks like this then. Orica Green Edge from Omega Pharma Quick Step by what's officially a second but actually was much less. Sky three seconds down in third, then Saxo Tinkoff, Lotto Belisol, Garmin Sharp, Moe Star and Lampre Marida all within 25 seconds. So a long agonising wait for Mark Cavendish and Code just to be edged out of a stage win. And confirmation from Mark that his teammate Tony Martin isn't the only man riding at less than 100%. Yeah, I didn't say anything last week because, you know, people put, they feature into their tactics, they try to get rid of I was sick all last week, you know, I was on antibiotics and uh, on Friday I didn't know if I was going to start and then we knew Saturday was going to be flat so I could give it a go and maybe bluff through it but then I really suffered the two days after, like really did. Last night I started to feel better and today I felt a bit better. I think it's still going to take a few days. Um, but ah, it's okay, you know. I think, like, like we're talking like, about Tony before, this guy's in a worse position than me, you know. At least I've still got all my skin left in it. 
Yep, there's always someone worse off than yourself, and today it was Cannondale's Ted King, another of Saturday's crash victims. His tour ended when he was dropped by his own team and came in outside the elimination time. Benjamin Noval of Saxo Tinkoff wasn't so much dropped as clipped, injuring his hand on a camera lens and coming in over four minutes behind his teammates. So it's turning into a pretty good tour for Orica Green Edge. Two stage wins and the yellow jersey for Simon Gerrans. And as you'd expect, after a team time trial, he's got teammates for company. Daryl Impey and Mikhail Albacini are second and third. The OPQS pair of Kvyatkovsky and Chavanel fourth and fifth. Then the Sky Trio of Bosenhagen, Froome and Port fill out the top eight. Simon Gerrans put himself into the position to take the yellow jersey by some smart, aggressive riding in this tour. And with some smart defensive riding, he could hold on to it for a bit. Yeah, this is a, a dream come true, it really is. Um, I earmarked stage three uh, from a long way out that I was going to try and win that. And uh, we knew we had a strong team here for the team's time trial, but we were by no means the favourites. Um, so to win here today and to take the lead of the race is, uh, is something pretty special. You've got to defend this now for a couple of days, but is that it? Is that, is that your tour done? What else do you guys have up your sleeves? Oh, geez, there's still a long way to go on the Tour de France. So who knows what's in store for the next couple of weeks. Are you going to have a little go in the mountains? Oh, I might, uh, I'm going to enjoy this yellow jersey hopefully for a day or two and then uh, we'll see after that. Well done, sir. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. Now, it may have been Australia Day on the Promenade des Anglais as far as the stage was concerned, but overall, it was a pretty decent stage for Chris Froome. He's now the best placed of the overall contenders in seventh, picking up six seconds today on Alberto Contador, 16 on Alejandro Valverde and Nairo Quintana, 23 over Cadell Evans and TJ Van Garderen, 25 on Joaquin Rodriguez, and 26 on Andy Schleck.